in the record though one of the things that uh, that i read that you'd said lars was that fact that you guys like you know when you're, when you're just intense about the things you do in the studio you guys fight you know you fight over certain things you know when, that are important to you in the studio and you guys know each other and work together for such a long time that it's an easier it's like you know it just seems like it's a more more you know easier to argue fun. no <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm i think we Once still argue person. but we don't take as long we figured it out and we kind of like bo exactly. use bob a yeah. lot bob's a really good mediator yeah bob's really um i think the greatest thing is both me and james trust him like a hundred percent so it's like if me and james are butting head over something but putting heads over something then bob kind of sits there and just goes with what's best and that's, that's a pretty cool situation to have it's just really easy especially for myself to work with vocally and uh, <clears throat> Help me get to some places I wanted to get to. That's yeah. exactly it. He's real good at um, like making you comfortable and capturing the performance once that is in, in place. You know, it gives you certain confidence and things like that. It's very cool in that way. What happened was we kind of developed a friendship. And when we finished the Black Album, I didn't think we were ever going to work with him again because it was like the hardest record to make. In what ways but, did you say? Uh, just about where everybody's heads were at at the time, and I think what everybody's perception of what. Metallica could be or should be. We had kind of, it was almost like sort of phase one was coming to an end and we knew we wanted to take it somewhere else. And we were writing some different songs and we're bringing in this other guy and he had his whole thing that he was bringing into it and it kind of just, <laughs> it was just really ugly and really difficult. And then a couple of years later when we sort of sat down and talked about if we wanted to work with him again, in the meantime, we had kind of become friends. He'd come out and, on the road and say hello and blah, blah, blah. And it was kind of pretty cool, but it wasn't a given, you know what I mean? But now I think it's a given. Um, it's not even something we talk about. It's just something like, you know, okay, we're making a record called Bob, you know, tell him to be here on Thursday or whatever. This record um, was different than the other ones because we knew what we were coming into, we were already familiar with the songs, the songs were already rehearsed together and everything like that, already memorized, most of the legwork was already done, the pre-production, all that was already out of the way. So we came in with a different headset. He had already been working on the songs for as long as we had, you know, for a couple of years or whatever. So everybody was in the same boat. Once we got to it, it was able to uh, apply it pretty quickly and then he was able to capture everything. Everybody was, like Lars was saying, the Black Album was so far, everybody was kind of askew, you know. On this one, everybody really had the same uh, idea. We knew where we wanted to go with the songs. Everybody was, had it memorized. It was there, you know. Jerry Cantrell's new album. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like the Portishead album. I think that's a great Plus album. Portishead and Radiohead. I like oh, the heads. Okay. Now Diamond Kirk will talk to you for five minutes Diamond about the Radiohead yeah. album. Radio album. No, I'll talk to you for five minutes about the Portishead album. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Well, Radio last Head. week it was Radiohead. Dude! Well, I almost got like that, so that's, you gotta that's, check that's, it out! How about you, Jason? Anything new that you find recently? New? <laughs> Over the last couple of years? Tough. Pretty tough. Well, the last couple of years, uh, Rage Against the Machine is still pretty tough, I think. Um, as far as heavy stuff, Voivod's still okay. Uh, Fear Factory is okay still, as long as they're kicking. It's just it's too bad that a lot of the bands that were really doing good and just seeming to get to their peak had to uh, split up Sepultura and Caius and that kind of thing. You know, that was always the cool stuff. So I heard Caius might be back together, so that, that'd be good. I really would like something to come out to... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, it's up to Earth. I, it's a shame. I, 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 like, I like the new Deftones album. That's cool. There's yeah, some great stuff on that around the yeah. fur. They kick ass. The best hard rock thing that's come out this fall is ACDC Box. Well, because it's all Bob Love and Bob Scott stuff. Yeah. Playing basically all of High Voltage and Let There Be Rock live. Yeah, it's really. Let There Be Rock was just a great sound. Great albums. 
Oh, oh you do the song. It's like brilliant. Uh, you hear it turn on, you just hear that, like, you hear the that, amp. That, you know, I do. Right exactly. I was talking to Angus Young one day, he was telling me that, uh, he, when his uh, older brother, you know, was in the Easy Beats when he was producing the record, he said the amp caught on fire when they were doing Let There Be Rock the Song. <laughs> and, he said, and his brother said, keep playing, keep playing. We wrote 27 songs in one stretch. And basically, Load was supposed to be a double album. That's what we went into the studio to develop, a double album. And then about six months later, uh, Peter and Cliff came out to, uh, our managers came out to uh, San Francisco and said, you know, we got a chance to play Lollapalooza, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, well, instead of trying to finish these 27 songs, why don't we just put a record out for a lot of Palooza and go out and play a lot of Palooza and do some touring of our own and then come back and finish the other 13. That was pretty much it in a nutshell. Reload are not remixes. They're not leftover stuff. They're not B-sides. They're, right. they're the rest of the songs, the right. songs that we didn't finish. And I think, I think they're the more extreme, you know, and heavier and stripped down ways, different ways, because, you know, when you first get in the studio, you kind of, you go with the kind of easier ones or to kind of break into the studio. So we got, you know, the first 14 done. And these are the kind of more intense and uh, a little more difficult ones, you know, we had saved for the end. So that's, you know, where these come into play now. Phil, I mean, this should be cool. You, obviously, there's fans probably. Yeah, you know what, off. Philly? It's kind of what I've been trying to say to people is that, you know, I'm not just saying this because it's Philly, but Philly has been incredible to us over the years. We've had some really amazing shows there. And the two shows that we played indoors in uh, in March of last year, or this year actually, still this year, right? It is still uh, this year right now. They were among, I'd say, probably the best half dozen shows of the tour. Um, really amazing. Because what happens down in Philly, you also get a lot of people come down from Jersey and stuff, as you would know. Yeah. And um, I mean, this is it, man. This is like. You know, this is Metallica they, country. Yeah, it is. Philadelphia um, is Metallica country. We're sort of you know, suburban New Jersey Woo! and stuff like that. That's, you know, we're people that can kind of hang with what we do. Play Anna Sandman. No. How's it going? Bow, down, 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 down. Bow, down, 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 Hey, cover still go crazy. That's something I've always wanted to ask you guys. That's one of my favorite records, Sheer Heart Attack. I it's love that great album. Great album. God, yeah. I'm going through a Queen renaissance right now, listening to no, almost nothing but Queen. What else do you like? Obviously, the what? Queen thing. Bad way. Like, then, we, then or now? Then. We're talking about then. Like, I saw then. I saw Thin Lizzy in 1978 for the Live and Dangerous tour. It's a great, a great album. And that reputation tremendous, was right. Tremendous album. Tremendous tour. I mean, it, it, was, it was monumental for me as a, 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 a little kid. I was even before I first first started playing guitar. I, I listened to a lot of Purple, a lot of Sabbath, a lot of Zeppelin, Thin Lizzy, Aerosmith, UFO. There, was, there weren't any American bands at the time that had a sound like UFO. And uh, I, it was something completely and totally different. And I, I loved them for that. And then when the new wave of British heavy metal started uh, rearing its head on, on the West Coast, in various different forms, I, um, you know, I, I took a liking to it because it was similar to, you know, to the approach that UFO were taking musically. Heck yeah. yeah we had uh, Boys Are Back in Town kind of our intro song on one tour. The boys are back in town. It's like, yeah, it's fast. Put a lot of covers of Cowboy Song. A lot of people have been doing that. Oh, yeah. Pretty interesting. Really? Yeah. Super Suckers. Uh, okay. Here's no material I talk about. I love, uh, love Lizzie. Those records are cool. Yeah. 
the super suckers, super suckers jammed on cowboy song. Yeah, they do super they do cowboy song. Really? Wow, that's kind of cool. for the memory remains and the making of that video. How's it go? Um, <laughs> memory remains. It's too fast. Yeah. Lay it back more. No, you gotta, you gotta feel yeah. the feeling. You gotta lay it back a lay little. Lay it back, back more. Now this, uh, you have a young director who did this. Uh, video. Let's talk about the concept. It's pretty, it's really unique actually. He came up with this thing that was a kind of an old, you know, something they yeah. used to go see at expeditions in like 1914 yeah, it, it, or something. Yeah, it's an illusion that, that, that uh, it, they used to uh, use Coney Island. At Coney, Coney Island. Island. Turn of the century. Yeah. Turn of the century. It was an illusion. I said that already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what it was is, uh, is basically people went onto a, a, a little platform and the room would, uh, would revolve around the platform, but the illusion was that you were spinning. The, the actual platform was spinning like this in the room, but the room would be the thing that would be spinning. Right. And, and we used to uh, get sick all the time from it, right? Yeah, you know, it's just uh, part of the illusion, I guess. Uh, the video was pretty cool. We had to take uh, Dramamine and everything. It was, I knew it was going to be pretty trippy. Uh, I kept warning Lars, hey, you better uh, take some Dramamine. He didn't want to have any of it. And then he got up on there and uh, didn't know if he could handle it. The room started spinning and we were suspended in this on this sled and the room was spinning around us like this 15,000 pound room on an axle spinning, you know. Axle? Axel was in it, and yeah, <laughs> spinning is like giant dryer, you know. Yeah. It was like yeah. being in a giant dryer, clothing dryer, clothes dryer. And you have to actually, you feel yourself moving, right? Because you're, you're held, you have your belt yeah, so up. Well, you, yeah, so your equilibrium. Kind of a mind, uh, fudge. Yeah, yeah you, exactly. You, your equilibrium <laughs> gets all thrown off. You know, you don't know what left, right, up and down is, north or south. You just even don't, more. You just don't know. Yeah, even more you don't than know where usual. you are. Anyway. Yeah. Usually we don't feel like that until about one or two in the morning, but <laughs> this is all day. <laughs> yeah, we were on this thing for two days for eight hours, you know, and it was more than that. It's crazy. Yeah. And you actually did lip sync to, I mean, do the lyrics. It's insane. Well, I wore shades in the whole video, so I had my eyes closed, so I wouldn't get sick all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. But idea. we had C bands on, you know, the the bands that uh, pressure points to make you, so yeah. it helps against motion sickness. At yeah. one point, you know, everything was nailed down in this room and, uh, you know, tables and everything. So when it was fun, it went crashing on there. We were nailed down. Yeah, <laughs> actually on tethers. So because if you fell off the, the, if you fell off the little sled into the room, you'd just be tumbling around like some underwear in a dryer. Yeah. <laughs> like Calvin. Like <laughs> the whole concept is, Marianne is in it, and she's 
kind of taking us on this fame ride, you know, like this really, you know, mind fluck, you know, yeah. in a way, uh, inside this box. So she's spinning us, and uh, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty trippy. Let's check it out right now. Here it is, Metallica's The Memory Remains. <laughs> Slow down. Amazing performance, great interview. Metallica's on the bus right now. I'm jumping on and we're out of here. Anyway, for Matt Rock, I'm Matt Pinfield. I'll see you next time.